Hey everyone and happy new year. I hope you had a very safe and happy holiday. As we jump into the new year, I want to challenge you that it can be the very best year of your life if it's the best year of your life spiritually. And to continue to challenge you along those lines, the Lord has really laid on my heart to set aside a season of prayer as we move forward. You know, there's a lot of things that we need as a church family, but I'm not talking about that. There's a lot of things that I need individually, but I'm not talking about that. I'm simply talking about growing into the heart of God through prayer. What I've learned in my life is that God can recalibrate our heart and that God can actually draw us closer to our heart the more we spend time with Him. A relationship with God is actually more about quality time than it is just quantity time. You gotta spend some time with God in order to get to know His heart. And I'm praying that as we open up the scriptures today that the Lord will impact you to spend more time with Him through prayer. As we go throughout the month, we're gonna be doing fasting and prayer together. Some levels of the church, maybe our captains and coaches, are gonna be fasting and praying just a little bit longer. Our staff is gonna be going after fasting and prayer the longest out of anybody. You're welcome to join us with that. But we wanna make prayer accessible and applicable to you, that it's something that anyone can do, that you don't need to jump in and, and, and ask for 500 people to pray for you, but you can go straight to the heart of God. So as we jump into this, man, my burden for you is to get to know God. Let's look at James chapter five this morning. Uh, before, we, before we go there today, let me pray. God, thank you in Jesus' name for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, that uh, in, in the days that we, we forge forward with whatever vision that we have, we're full of vision right now. I know it. It's the beginning of the year. We're looking forward to a new year. We're looking forward to many new opportunities. It's a blank slate in front of us. And Lord, I pray that we can start this year off right in your presence. So God, teach us today. Teach us to pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So James chapter 5 is one of my favorite scriptures. It's essentially talking about there their being power available. If you have a chance to read this in the, in the Amplified Version, I'd really encourage you to do so. But I love this. It says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. That therefore is actually there for a reason. You can read the rest of the context of this in, in, uh, in your own time today. But I'm going to jump into the scriptures today that are below that therefore. It says, The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. The Amplified actually says it has tremendous power. It makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Then the scripture goes on and says, Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. I want you to underline that today. That's where we're going to focus. He prayed and heaven gave. If you have a, a Bible with you as well, let's jump back to the book of Philippians. I'm going to give you another scripture here that shares this principle that I want to jump into, that when you pray, heaven actually gives. The apostle Paul is imprisoned in the book of Philippians. And he talks about rejoicing while he's, uh, while he's in prison. He says, yet I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help or the supply of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. Okay, so let's just stop on the scripture. Let's just stop on the scripture. Think about this, okay? That word help uh, is the word epikorigos. And the word epikorigos in the original Greek was the word on behalf of the choir. It meant a supply of something that was so big, you would take your whole life and you wouldn't be able to, to you wouldn't even know what to do with it. <laughs> you take your whole life and jump into that supply. I want you to know today that as you pray, as you enter into the heart of God, as you, as you experience the heart of God and the presence of God, I want you to know that there's power available for you. You know, in our world today, we feel powerless, but I want you to know that God is okay with being your only option. There was this gentleman who uh, was inspired by Free Solo. I don't know if you've, you guys have seen this Free Solo yet, uh, but I watched Free Solo. Eric Farmer told me about it. He's like, there's something wrong with this guy's hypothalamus, whatever that thing is called. But he doesn't understand that, there, that there's dangers of, you know, climbing like a, a 14,000 foot mountain face by himself without any, uh, without any kind of ropes or anything like that. It's so funny. This guy, I, I'm watching it and, and my hands are sweating. If you've seen Free Solo, I, my, you probably understand. My hands are sweating. I know that he's going to be okay, but I'm like, this guy's, <laughs> he's done, you know? Well, there was a gentleman who uh, was, was recently inspired by that, and, and he went to um, climb El Capitan, and he's out on the mountainside, and as he's climbing the mountainside, he gets to a place where 
there's no other option. There's nobody, there's nobody around. And he just screams, is there anyone who can help? Because he ran out of strength. Is there anyone who can help? And he hears a voice that says, let go and I'll help you. This is God. And he's like, is there anyone else who can help? Is there anyone else who can help? Uh, I want you to know today that God is okay being your only option. If I could be frank with you, many times in life, God will take, you, take us to a place where he is our only option. I, th- I felt a long time ago that any time that I would experience any kind of difficulty or any kind of pain, that I was either outside of the will of God or God was punishing me for something. This isn't necessarily the case. God will often lead you to a place where he is your only option. And he's okay with that. But it, sometimes it can be frustrating. One time Lauren and I, we, it was about 2015. I was completely fine. I was completely comfortable with me being my option. I was, I was, I loved God. I, I spent time with God. But you know what? I, I was in a, in a comfortable place in life. And God began to tap on my heart that while I was comfortable, God wanted to take me to a place that was going to be uncomfortable, but there was going to be blessing on the other side. I want you to know today that if you're struggling, it, just because you have a struggle in your life doesn't mean you're outside of the will of God. Many times, the struggles that you'll experience are because you're right smack in the, in the middle of the plan of God for your life. And if you're experiencing struggle and you're wondering, like, when am I going to get through this thing? God will often use our struggles to draw you closer to his heart. God will often use the issues, the, 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 the problems that you go through to draw you to a place of complete dependency on God. And so it can be frustrating. Like in that season for us, we were completely comfortable, but God says, hey, I'm going to take you out of your comfort and I'm going to place you in a spot where you're going to have to be fully dependent on me. I kind of was like, I, I don't know if I want that right now, God. You know, I don't, I don't know. Like I'm fine where I am. Everything's okay. But the Lord began to make it so uncomfortable for me that if I didn't listen to him and step out in faith to start Hill City Church, that I was being directly disobedient to him. Man, there were tough times. There was a time that you guys have probably all heard where we, uh, we, we got to a place where we completely ran out of finances and I didn't want to tell anybody. I knew my family would probably help us if we needed help. I knew that uh, our, my old workplace would help us if, if they knew that we needed help. I knew my boss would, ha- would, would help me if, if he knew that I needed help. But I was at a place where the Lord led us to be completely dependent on him. I don't like being at that place, but I love being at that place. Let me just be clear with you. And so I remember Lauren calling me and saying to me, Zach, like, can we buy some groceries? And I was like, hey, babe, we don't have any money. Uh, we're going to have to wait probably four or five days when I get paid. And she's like, well, we don't, ha- we don't have any food right now. And so I looked at myself and I was like, what am I doing? I'm, I, I, I've taken my, place, my, my family out of a place of complete comfort. And right now, like, we're, we don't even have enough money for food. What are we going to do? And Lauren says, I'm going to pray. So I said, you go ahead and pray. I don't have the emotional capacity to pray. See, when, it's the, when the Bible says that, there's, that prayer makes tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working, faith or, or, or prayer should not be our last resort, but our first response. Maybe we're living powerless lives. Maybe we're in ineffective lives because we're not people of prayer. Okay, that'll challenge somebody right now as it has challenged me. I I wanted it to be my last resort. I was like, no, let me figure this out. I'll figure this out. Just give me, give me time. Well, I break down on a construction site and, and the Lord, you guys know, fellas, you know, if you start balling on a construction site, it's a, it's a, it's a bad day, (laughs) you know, living on a prayer. Bon Jovi comes on. I'm singing, whoa, living on a prayer. And I'm like, I really am living on a prayer right now. God is okay with being your only, with, with being your only option. And prayer is a place where we embrace God as our only option. And we surrender everything that we have to him so that he can move in our lives. I wasn't even at a place of prayer and faith at that point, but Lauren was. And so she she goes and prays and somebody blessed us with gift cards that night. And our board put us on a salary just not a few days later. They gave us some back pay so that we could pay our bills. We had groceries for the week. We had everything that we needed. But I got to the place where, quite honestly, I wanted to break down. Anybody else not want to trust in God, like have a propensity to not want to trust in God? You want to trust in yourself? I just want to uh, bring a little bit of ease to you today. Um, The Bible says that we move from faith to faith and glory to glory. That means that we're probably going to go from one space of trusting God to the next space of trusting God. How many of you know 2020 was pretty much like that? You're like, 2020 is going to be the best year of my life. It's perfect vision, right? Uh, I don't know about that. 
it was a little bit crazy. <laughs> but we move from faith to faith and glory to glory. We have another option. We have another year, another year to trust God here. Sometimes I wish the times of complete dependency upon God would end so I could be comfortable by a Winnebago and just drive around the country, but that's not what God has called me to do. Sometimes I wish I could hit the lottery, but I just want to, I just want to just I just want to take some pressure off of you, okay? My grandma, she used to play her numbers all the time. Yeah, anybody else have a grandma who played her? I got to play my numbers. I got to play my, that's what she said all the time. She'd, she'd see a phone number pop up. She's like, I got to play that. I'd be like, grandma, how many times have you played the lottery? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, how much money have you lost? She's like, oh, I'm about even. We all know she wasn't about even, right? But the chances of you hitting the lottery are one in 259 million. You have a better chance of drowning in a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably not going to be the next movie star. I'm just taking pressure off you. This is probably overnight. You're, you're, you're probably just, you're not going to be the next Nicolas Cage, you know, who, who says the same thing in every movie. Baby, I love you, and we've got to get out of here. It's like the same thing, right? Um, there's a guy named Pierre Le Guenic, who was an electrician who worked for a man named Pablo Picasso. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but Pablo gave him 271 previously unknown pieces of art over the course of his employment. Uh, those things were sold for millions and millions of dollars. You probably aren't going to work for a Pablo Picasso. There's a man named Rick Norsigian. He was a collector in Fresno who found prints at a, at a garage sale for 50 bucks. Investigations by historians confirmed that the collection of glass negatives belonged to the legendary nature photographer Ansel Adams. The prints are worth around 200 million. Okay? The chances of you going to a swap meet <laughs> and finding Ansel Adams, I mean, I, they're probably would drown in a bucket. <laughs> Oscar Stroller was a man who bought a farm in North Dakota who struck a fortune in crude oil found on that farm in 2008. He did not move to Beverly Hills, just so you know, but I wonder uh, if, he, if he actually watched that, that TV show. Uh, God wants to take you to a place today and, and really over the course of your life, where he is your only option. I've asked myself many times through the course of many seasons of trusting God in many capacities, why don't we have a propensity to pray first? Like if this power in, in the book of Philippians and the book of James is actually available to us, why don't we have a propensity to pray first? Like what, what, what's the issue here? The first thing is, and I, I just want to validate, we don't know how to pray. Hey, by the time that this month is over, I want you to know how to pray. <laughs> you know, we don't know what to pray. It's like when I, when, okay, so do I just talk to God? And then when I talk to him, like, like, what do I actually say, right? By the time this month is over, I want you to know what to pray. And you know what? Here's the thing. We don't know what we're missing out on. If we find ourselves uninspired or behind in prayer, the chances we really don't know what we're missing out on. We're missing out on a world of adventure. We're missing out on, on seeing God's stories weaved throughout chaos. We're, we're, we're missing out on, on being able to see God's presence in our families. God wants to take you to a place today where he's your only option. Prayer gives God room in our lives. And I ask myself, and I've asked myself, you know, through the, throughout the course of many trials and tribulations and many seasons of trusting God, you know, why don't I have the propensity to pray first? If the scripture, if I really believe that this scripture is true, through your prayers and the help of the Spirit, like if I, if I pray alongside the power of the Spirit, the supply of the Spirit, that epicure goes, and if I, if I pray, it's making tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working, just like Elijah, I pray and heaven gives. Like if, if, if this is really true, and I believe this from the core of my being, why don't I pray first? Well, there are three reasons. Number one is we don't know how to pray. Man, by the, by the time this month is over, I want you to know how to pray. I want to pour out my life and pour out my heart so you know how to pray. The second thing is we don't know what to pray. Like, okay, so I don't know how to pray. Like, do I, do I put my knees on the ground? Do I, like, do I like go in a room? Do I have to like light incense? <laughs> like, what do I do? But then we don't know what to pray. Like, I don't know what to say to God. What, what, do, I what do I even talk to him about? By the time that we are done with this month, I want you to know that. We don't know what we're missing out on. Like, this is the big thing. Like, we don't know the God stories that we're missing out on if we're not inspired to pray more. 
And what I want you to do is I want everybody to get a journal and write in the things that you're praying for. Have a prayer journal so that you can see when God answers your prayers. Then you'll understand, just like, just like I've learned throughout the years, what, what I've been missing out on. I want to give you a couple things about prayer that I hope is, it's going to be, it's going to be elementary. But again, we're going to take you through a process here. Here's some, here's some things that, that prayer does for us. Let's, let's talk three things that prayer does for us, okay? Number one, prayer builds a prioritized relationship with God. You know, as we approach God in this month to come, I want to challenge you not to approach God uh, from the aspect of he, he being a spiritual vending machine. Many times as a, as a pastor, uh, people will, will actually say to me, Zach, hey, uh, what prayer do I need to pray and what do I need to do for God to, get me, to, God, for God to give me this? As if, if I have enough faith or if I do all of these things, then if I pull this lever, then God is going to release. God wants to build a prioritized relationship with you. The Bible actually says in, in the book of 1 Peter that we have been blessed with all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of God. And so I believe that the Lord is a healer. I've seen God heal. I believe that God wants his children blessed. I've seen God bless. I, I, I see it in the scriptures and I've seen it with my own eyes. The problem is when we only go to God whenever we want something, it's not building a prioritized relationship with him. Remember this, God wants you to be relational over transactional. The second thing that prayer does is it exercises spiritual authority. Many of you have felt like you've been in the battle of your lives. In the book of Daniel, he was in the battle of his life in Daniel chapter 9 and Daniel chapter 10. But he says that he's going to refrain from desirable food. Listen, you've got to win the battle in the spiritual. You've got to win the battle in the spiritual. As a matter of fact, I'm going to jump over to the book of Ephesians very quickly. I want you to see that we need to win the battle in the spiritual. We see in, in the book of, of Ephesians, it says, Stand therefore, having, uh, having fastened the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances take up the shield of faith, with which you'll, you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So it says all of these things, you and I are in a battle. But the Apostle Paul ends this. He says, praying at all times in the Spirit with all, all prayers and supplication. We have got to win this battle in the spiritual. So prayer exercises our spiritual authority. And the third thing that prayer does is it invites God into our lives. I want to challenge you with the thought that a day without prayer is a boast against God. I don't need to get my act together and then pray. I need to pray in order to get my act together. The presence of God and the word of God are two of the most powerful tools in our belt. See, I know what it's like to do God's will and not pray, and I'll never have any part of that again. Oh man, I remember a season where I was just working for God. And I just felt empty and I'm emptying out my heart and I'm pouring out my heart and pouring out my heart. But, you know, I, I, I can't pour out of an empty cup. You've got to spend time. The Bible actually says in the book of Acts that times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. So for us to get filled up, we actually need to spend time in God's presence, right? But I remember a time where I wasn't spending time in God's presence. I was just working and working and working. As I, I, as I did so, I poured out to the detriment of my own family. I poured out to the detriment of my own personal health. I poured out to the detriment of my own spiritual life. I remember feeling in my heart like I was dying. You know, we need the good shepherd in our lives. There's many reasons why Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. It's because we aren't meant to tackle these things alone. Just a quick note about sheep. They are, aren't attack sheep. Sheep can't, you know, you, you never see a sheep biting someone. I got bit by a goat one time. Like, probably can't see this scar on my finger. But Danielle, who's in our Church Anywhere group, she's a veterinarian. I, I had to confirm it with her. I'm like, I remember getting bitten by a goat, and like, I think this scar is from it. She's like, yeah, that's possible. I was like, so I could tell that story? She's like, yeah, absolutely. Verified by a vet. I got bit by a goat, and I got a scar. But you know, you don't see sheep biting. You don't see, see like attack sheep. You, you, you're, you're not an attack sheep, right? There aren't GPS sheep. They don't really know where to go. They have to be led. 
Sheep aren't in flocks. They're, they're in flocks. They're not in herds. They're, they're not herd animals, right? Sheep can't shear themselves. A sheep sometimes, you know, will get separated from its flock. It'll have its, its, its wool so wet it'll lay down and it needs to be sheared. This is why we need the good shepherd in our lives. And I'm just challenging you, get off of, of whatever it is that you think is going to lead you in the right direction and connect your heart to the presence of God through prayer. In the church, there's sheep, there's goats, and there's wolves. But I'll tell you, I've never counseled someone who's constantly in prayer. Goats pray, but oftentimes the prayers are my will, not thy will. That's why they're goats. They can't be led. So we want to be sheep, right? John Wesley says, it seems as if nothing, if, if God can do nothing on the earth today, save a man pray. And I want to challenge you today. I want to give you a little bit of encouragement as we close. God answers the prayers that you forgot that you prayed. God answers the prayers that you forgot you prayed. One time I remember just simply praying to impact Robert Morris. I remember being just, man, Lord, like, and I wrote this down in my prayer journal, just like I, like I shared with you to have. I remember writing it down in my prayer journal, um, but I forgot. Then one day, the Lord just opens up a door for us to minister on Robert Morris's campus. God answers the prayers that you forgot that you prayed. God answers the prayers that you didn't know that you prayed. In 2002, I met this wonderful woman, and I would drive from Ambridge all the way to Washington uh, on 79, probably three or four times a week just to see her. I'd be driving home, and the only thing that I would do, I would listen, I would listen to music, and I would just pray in the Spirit. As I was driving up and down the interstate, 79, up and down, all throughout the summer, all throughout the, the next four years, I was just praying, I was just praying, I was just praying. You know, I was actually praying right past the land that the Lord has given us. Isn't that amazing? God answers the prayers that you didn't even know that you prayed. I remember sensing his presence right by that hill and just leaning into prayer. God answers the prayers that you didn't know you prayed. And here, this is what I've learned through the years. God answers the prayers that you prayed incorrectly. When Lauren and I stepped out in 2015 and God became our only option, we went to Columbus and we felt like the Lord could be leading us there. So we prayed around the beltway in Columbus, all around the city. We felt really good about it. Well, it didn't work out in Columbus. And we couldn't rectify, we couldn't, we couldn't reconcile what, why it felt good praying in Columbus and why it didn't work out. Then one of my friends, Rod, who didn't really know much about what we were doing, stands up in the middle of a church service and he looks at me and Lauren and he says, I see you praying around another city. And he said, God wants you to know today that even though, uh, even though you prayed the wrong prayer, God will still honor that prayer. And he talked about Joshua telling the sun to stand still. He said, the sun doesn't stand still. He prayed the wrong prayer. But in that day, God still answered the prayer. God answers the prayers that you prayed incorrectly. So I'm going to give you a couple scriptural challenges as we close. The Bible says in Luke chapter 5 and verse 16, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. How often do you withdraw to pray? And do you have a place to pray? My kids know that I have a place of prayer. And I'm pretty sure that they know that it's a customary thing for me. You could see in the life of Jesus that he had a place to pray. This is how Judas knew where he was to betray him. He said he was going to be here as it was his custom to pray. So do you have a place and an hour of prayer? What do you pray? Like, where do you even start? Philippians 4 and verse 6 says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Pray about what makes you anxious. Can we just make this simple? Have a place of prayer. Have a time of prayer. Pray about what makes you anxious. And I'm going to challenge you with the scripture that we, we opened up to originally. It says, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you could be healed. See, a confession to a brother and prayer is going to heal your heart. You can confess to God that you've sinned and he's going to forgive you, but it's time to open up to a brother and actually pray with somebody and you'll see the Lord heal your heart through that. The prayer of a righteous person has great power available as it's working. So if, if you pray and heaven gives, 
plug in to the only source that charges you. You know, every night before I, I, I go to bed, I put my phone on my wireless charger. And sometimes I have my phone slightly off the wireless charger and I wake up and my phone's just about dead. Or sometimes the wireless charger won't work because I don't have a right plug plugged into it. For some reason, it's just not working that night. I find my wake up and I'm dead. Some of you right now, uh, if, if you would be honest, you look at your life and you're like, my battery is just about dead. Like, I, I don't know what's gonna fill me up. It's time to come back to the only source that's going to charge you up, that's going to fill you up in this season. He pray, you pray and heaven gives. There's power available to you. Plug into the source of that power. The Bible says that times of refreshing come, from, come directly from the Lord. Hey, as we close, I wanna invite you on a journey with us throughout this month. Come on, this is gonna be the best year of your life if it's the best year of your life spiritually. So it's time to recalibrate our hearts, get our hearts realigned. We wanna set some time to fast, to pray together, and I wanna pour my heart out teaching you what prayer is all about this month. I would invite you along the journey. We'll have information available for you. Hey guys, happy new year. Let's pray. God, thank you in Jesus' name that power is available as we pray. Lord, wherever our, we're experiencing weakness in our lives, Father, I pray that the power of God uh, surpasses that weakness. God, wherever we're, we're experiencing anxieties, Lord, we cast our cares about, uh, uh, upon you. We, 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 we purpose in our heart to, to give those things over in prayer. So God, right now, whoever's listening, wherever they are, God, I pray in Jesus' name that their heart is inspired to reconnect to you through prayer. Lord, take us on a journey. We open up our hearts. We love you and pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for being with us today, Hill City family. Happy New Year. Love you guys so much, and I'll see you next week.